It was no, it was a very strange time. I remember even at that that I know I was in a plane. You know, there was a Bupak lo- loves playing these like Muzak versions of pop songs, mm-hmm. and I know the, it started playing Careless Whisper. You can never listen in the to plane. Careless, and everyone looks at you. Yeah, parang they're like <laughs> waiting for my reaction. I'm like, it's God, like what you're going to get God. up and dance. <laughs> uh, I know what are we gonna do? Right? Like, <laughs> That's my cue! <laughs> oh, no, is a filmmaker, vocalist of Us Two Evil Zero, and head of a film studio. You got married! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what convinced you to get ditched? I, you know what? Was, it, was this like something you had planned? No, when I hit a certain age, I will. I was, ditched. I actually was, but I, my, the age in my mind was 27 and I'm 38. So, okay. I know, but Why 27? Little, little... 27 is the age where if you're a rock star, you drop dead. Yes, so exactly. So you were going to get married so, at the age when you should drop dead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like instead of dropping dead, maybe I should settle down and have the kids and and I, I wanted to do it earlier because I wanted to grow up with my kids. Ah. Um, yeah, kasi yeah. naman if you have kids when you're uh-huh. 70, the diba? boys like Yeah. So your great grandfather's with you. Mm. It's bad on the knees. You can't, you know, can't chase them around. Can't play hide and seek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't. But um, you know, it, I think it's it's also it, it's been great be, having the single life, and it's actually been a lot more awesome being married. So. Mm-hmm. So how long have you been married? <laughs> I've been married four months. Uh, well, I'm legally we got married March, so six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it's like um, you don't have buyer's remorse. Not at all. Like, like, okay. <laughs> parang one long sleepover. Ano siya eh? Um, and then she's so sweet. Yesterday she's like, oh, I made breakfast for you in the patio, and you know, that was my card. And like, what's going on? And, we made, we've been married <laughs> legally six months, and like, wow. Oh, and then, and we're then celebrating like, this. Oh, I shit, love this. I forgot. <laughs> If there's some kind of anniversary involved. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, do we even celebrate this? But I love no, it. No, apparently now you celebrate every month. Yeah, de ba? And um, so I've known you since you were an annoying child walking yes. around the radio station, reciting the screenplay of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I remember that very well. <laughs> Because, so you've always loved movies, no? Okay. Yeah. D- did you love movies more than radio or radio mov- more than movies? I loved, uh, no, definitely movies more than radio, but uh, parang gun to head. I don't know if you made me choose between music or Cinema. I don't. Some days I would choose music. Some days I would choose cinema. But um, but yeah. Speaking of, I, I did get to show you. I actually a few months ago I interviewed um, Samuel L. Jackson, oh. and I actually did recite um, the oh, Path wow. of the Righteous Man with him, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was uh, you know. You have to give us the tape so we can hear it. Sige, sige, mm-hmm. I'll give you the file of that. Um, yeah, it was a very cathartic experience being able to mm. actually say it. And. Um, Did he say motherfucker a lot? Uh, no, he was like very, parang very tito eh. Parang he's like, you know, kind of bored, kind of no. And then when I asked him, can we do, you know, uh, Ezekiel 25, 17 together? Did you eat cheeseburgers? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a five dollar shake. No. Mm-hmm. no, no foot massage, no, none of that. But um, but that was uh, that was really great. Like, and but you waited to make your first movie until you were how old? Uh, I made my first film when I was 21. Well, so. then that, so that's not much of a way. <laughs> yeah. No, because so. I was expecting that, you know, by your teens, you would have been making... Mm. I made short films. Yeah. Um, I made uh, A Date with Joe Mapa and mm-hmm. um, like, yeah, a few short films for school. And then, um, yeah, parang it just so happened, like, when I graduated, um, I was... I wa- so, A Date with Joe Mapa won the palanca and then yeah. Viva got me as a writer and then... Um, so they made me write a film for for to launch Maui Taylor, mm-hmm. uh, who was their new uh, star at the time, and then um, 
I, I think at the time Eric was fighting with Viva, Eric Mati, then Peke de Galiaga didn't want to do sexy films, and neither did Yamla Rana. So they went through like seven directors, and they couldn't find a director for, for that script I wrote, and they really needed to launch Maui. And then, and then, I and said, then they finally. Yeah, and then, and then they're like, you know, I actually direct music videos for you guys. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, let's so see, let's it was a, a learning experience, as in, as you went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, you know, definitely learning. I mean, being a twenty-one year old in a in a set, you had to direct sex scenes. Yeah, never having made the movie yeah. before, you had to make sex scenes. Yeah, and I remember that. I remember being on set in Maui, and I'm like. Um, is this your first sex scene? And she's like, yeah, and it's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, like, like when you're directing a sex scene, it's a very weird yeah. thing. Yeah, and you know? now I hear they have um, on-set coordinators to make sure everyone is yeah. it's, um, it's, comfortable. Yeah. Thank God, yeah. Both in lang. I mean, um, some of them brought their titas along, so <laughs> they did have on-set coordinators. But I remember that the assistant director kind of took over during the sex scene because you know, you don't know how to... Can you put your left hand on her breast? Uh, can yeah, you, yeah. Can you kiss his neck a little bit? And do you know how in, um, in old Filipino movies, like in, in the 70s and 80s, um, if you heard saxophone music, mm. that means there was going to be sex. Yes. Did there, yes. Was there saxophone music there in your movie? There was not. I made it a point because, yeah, I, I do love... Um, What's that? Uh, you know, a lot of the Koi's older stuff. You parang ano, and you remember, no, growing up, the the these so, ano, sax yeah. music. So I, I wanted, and I, I think I was very much into traffic at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was a very Brian Eno type score, and mm -hmm. then uh, the the scores of Gamitan were uh, Raymond Marasigan and um, and uh, Buddy Zabala. So. You know, the, I mean, getting the eraser heads to score, of course, walang sax. That was like a very, mm -hmm. I know, a rule on set na, uh, on, for the film na, parang we will not use sax for sex. So, no sax so for no sex. No sax for sex. Mm, and um, when was the last time you saw Gamitan? Uh, the last time I Can saw Can you bear Gamitan to see it? One of 10 years. There, okay, there's only, there's actually one movie of mine that I've only seen once during the premiere. And, you know, I can't bring myself to watch it again. Uh, because of the trauma of making it, and because I thought it was a horrible movie, um, which is super mm -hmm. Um I remember we had our production which house. Which is a film party. festival movie, no? Yeah, that was an MMFF film. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I, I remember the film was orange. There was like one reel that was orange because we graded it in, in Thailand, and when it came back, it, Something <laughs> it was wrong. a mess. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always told myself, you know, I will one day watch Super Noipi again. Mm -hmm. um, it's been 13 years. So maybe I should watch it this year. Um, I maybe promise, you should yeah. watch it drunk. Maybe. Maybe. Because I promised, you know, Bianca, my wife, is like, I have to watch all your movies. I mean, everyone's asking me about Keka. Uh, I don't know. I you have seen copies Keka. of all your movies. I have copies of. Um, I, Gamitan Keka, uh, Super Noipi. I uh, know, Super Noipi, I actually do, and Rock and Roll. Um, so four out of six, I think, um, and of course the short films. So I, I, I showed her Keka at last. Um, so maybe it's time to show her Super. I enjoyed Keka a lot. In fact, I <laughs> you first were quoted saw, in Keka. I first saw Keka at the Udine Film um, Far East Film Festival in Italy. Mm -hmm. So we're in a we're in a large. Um, was this we're in a large auditorium, and then the, the the other members of the media are seated in a row. And then Keka is on, and then she says, Sabi ni Jessica Zafra walang serial killer sa Pilipinas. And all the other media looked at me like, you're important. <laughs> <laughs> they just, uh, they just, they named you, you <laughs> in a movie. Yeah. I forgot to offer you a drink. What can we oh, offer you? Uh, uh, tea, please. Okay. So. <laughs> Gamba tea, please. Yes. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is our uh, assistant, oh, Gamba. How, did, how does he get these? Uh, <laughs> Lovely abs. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> I worked at your dad's radio station. You grew yes. up during the rock era, and then you have been in bands, you've managed bands, and your movie Rock and Roll was about the, the indie song. rock scene of the 90s. Mm. And so do you still listen to that music? Um, do you miss that music? Actually, when I was on the way here, Jam 88.3 has a Flashback Friday or what, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and, and you know, they were they were playing <laughs> like right before I parked, they were playing Killing in the Name. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we Wikipedia. What well, is Killing no, in the which name? is which is still yeah. very relevant because yeah. people are angry. Yeah. Re no. As in, I don't know why there is no Rage Against the Machine revival. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, well, we can talk about this in a bit. Um, but 
you know, parang kids don't have angry music, di ba? Yeah, These where days. is the angry music today? Who are uh, the angry performers exactly. now? Exactly. I mean, there, there was gangster rap, then there, there was grunge, and there was... I guess there's still um, um, angry rap. Me, but it's parang more lifestyle rap, eh, di ba, now? So, so it's strange, I mean... No, no, for for true anger, you need some metal rap or something. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, there was even that, that Linkin Park kupaw... Uh, um, new metal, diba? that, mm-hmm. then that's kind of like the last. And then after that, parang there's no outlet really for for kids. But um, I, I do go back to it a lot. I wanted to actually make a documentary. We were interviewing. Um, yes, because you know, it was such an unusual time, the 90s, in, mm-hmm. in the Philippines. Because we've always listened to the same kind of romantic ballads, spirit music, and then mm-hmm. some, some suddenly there's the alternative scene. Yeah. And then, of course, um, I always time it. Uh, I always figure it coincided with the Asian financial crisis. Whoosh, uh, everybody uh, went back to the the traditional stuff. Yeah, no, and, and then the body world. There was like a UP scene. Yeah, there was a La Salle scene. There was an also. Um, it, was, it was really great that, that the whole. I mean, it, even stuff I wasn't really super into, like Razorback or you know, mm-hmm. like like there was there were so many great stories and. Uh, yeah, like the you know. fact that um, uh, well, in the late '80s, people had to wear gel, mm-hmm. and there were there was a class divide in UP. Mm-hmm. The, the the rich people had DPT do gel, mm-hmm. and then the people who had no budget used paste. I seen you school paste for your <laughs> hair. So um, if you were watching a concert and it started raining, you could tell who was wearing paste because <laughs> they would run into the buildings because they would lose their book. Nila. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Yeah, but diba? there has to be a document of that. Yeah. So so we were kind of trying to work on one. Kamini Irvin and Diego. Um, we interviewed uh, Patrick Ryden back, and then we realized, oh my gosh, it's such a daunting task to kind of like get all these people. And you know, a lot of them are dead now. Yeah. I see everybody mm. died young. Yeah. Yeah, or, or a little, yeah, I mean, we didn't get to interview Pepe and of course he's not with us anymore. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and he lived a long time after mm-hmm. Pepe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. So, there. Well, anyway, one of the major changes of the last few years is I used to go to the cinema two or three times a week and now I find that I only go when there's an event movie like the Avengers Infinity War, The Avengers Endgame, etc. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like all the movies that now open, with, with rarities like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or Ad Astra, um, they're mostly sequels, mm. reboots, franchises. And it's like the original stuff, if you have a new idea, go to a streaming service. What the hell's going on? Oh. No, it's, no, it's very different, very strange. Parang, we talk a lot about the 90s, and I was telling Soki earlier, parang, um, ano eh, diba? Like, remember the days when there was Groundhog Day, and Dave, and Reality Bites. So, parang these weird films that were not yeah. indie, they were like quirky, ano, um, yes. Heathers. Parang and yet, you can't they have were for the big anymore. screen. Yeah. Mm, you, there, there's no such thing, mm-hmm. except on Netflix. Right. Diba? And in, in fact, in the US, the um, the rom com is owned now by the streaming services. Diba? Mm. And so, yun nga, like, like, and and I think um, uh, Lucas and Spielberg made this. Um, uh, they they kind of predicted that this would happen. That that cinema would be like like going to the theater, going mm. to you know live theater, and and kind of like more event na lang than. I know it's it's some whatever the, that is more bagay to be you know spectacular and and uh, experienced by a mass audience is the ones uh, is a kind of film that will survive in cinemas which is mm-hmm. kind of a so the small now. personal movies yeah. um, they are to be consumed in your house no more communal experience Mm-mm, yeah except well rom coms na pinoy mm-hmm. so if you look at the, the top three grossing films of all time right now. Number one and two are Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. Mm-hmm. So it's like 1.5, 1.6 billion. And then I thank God for, I know, for, um, what's the what's the recent, I know, um, uh, Catherine and, uh, um, ah, oh. uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, love, goodbye. Yes. It's like, I know, 600 million. I, yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. So, but, but after that, after no, that. Catherine th- Bernardo starred in the two biggest Hits in Philippine history, mm, that yeah. that one, and then then the house, mm, of, yeah. house of us, yeah. yeah. And so so yeah, and then after that it's Beauty and the Beast, uh, Civil War. So parang ano talaga, um, big Hollywood. And I guess it's a it's both a blessing and a curse that we Pinoys are so good at English, 
that parang do we even need Pinoy cinema, de ba, in the theaters? Mm-hmm. Parang that begs the question. So yeah, you're right. Um, it, it's I guess also you know um, think think about going to the cinema. You spend maybe an hour in traffic. You spend fifty uh, to hundred for parking, and then you pay your two hundred. Yeah, yeah. So you end up paying like a thousand. It's three hundred na. Ha? On the yeah. other hand, you know your yeah. your Netflix subscription is like yeah every month. Yeah. Exactly. So mm-hmm. you pay you know, and then if you do iFlix or Hook, that's like a hundred twenty or a hundred fifty per month. Mm-hmm. So, ba? Yeah. So, so is it easier for um, Filipino filmmakers to get produced now that there are? Several streaming services that they can um, approach. Yes and no. I mean, I think everybody is working, but not so few are making movies. So a lot are doing I want series. A lot are doing you know online. Stuff. Yeah, I think it's because you know um, there's been a shakeup. The traditional media is not what it used to be, and but no one has gotten a grip on digital yet. Mm. On 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 online and yeah. how to. Make gazillions of it. Diba? Yeah. Wild West, talaga, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but my wonder is, what I'm wondering is, will they need Filipino content? And of course, they will. No? But but look, if you look at Netflix, Netflix buys maybe 25 films a year, and probably a lot of that is just back catalog, diba? Yeah. Um, they don't need to make a Netflix original na Pinoy. They don't need to, ano. Uh-huh. So, will that be good for us or will that be bad, diba? Anyway, you mentioned earlier that you met Samuel Samuel L. Jackson. How? Uh, I interviewed him for Captain Marvel. Mm, and? So, uh, ayun, I mean, I I interviewed him and then Gemma Chan, who's a darling, mm-hmm. and then Brie Larson, who is an he's interesting not. character. Oh, so, I, I think he's very, you know, parang very calculated every move. Like, oh, I should be happy now. <laughs> parang, oh, may parang ano, may parang robotic. Quality, uh, mm-hmm. CSC Brie Larson. But um, yeah, we we interviewed them, and uh, you're actually not supposed to mention stuff that's not ah. Marvel films or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think I got into trouble a bit for doing the, the pulp fiction bit. But ah, so you're supposed to stick to the subject only. <laughs> yeah. Because they have done nothing else. Yeah. But yes. that movie, yeah. Yeah, but I mean. My God, it's the only film passage I really take to heart, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs> so that was uh, that was um, super fun. Experience. Yeah, and um, years before that, you met Quentin Tarantino. Yes. So um, what was that like? That was great. I think that was like super uh, surreal because I really was fanboying, and I think he could smell that. Um, like when I met met him, I knelt down and like. I became a filmmaker because of you and these are my <laughs> films and you know and he was like very I, I could tell it uh, parang very ilang sa akin and then I, and then one day he's, he's like, like is he being sarcastic <laughs> yeah or he's like well, look at this fanboy <laughs> and then he's like but then you know he with his own idols is a super fanboy yeah yeah and then I think I think he's like one day he sees me again he's like come here come here they're like you know what I was I was uh, being driven down Edson and I, I saw this billboard I was like, that's quartz film. And I went to this video store and I saw this other poster and like, that's Quark's film. <laughs> and this guy's bigger than he makes himself out to be. Mm-hmm. Like, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fucking like, uh, sorry, it, <laughs> over, over, uh, I mean, I'm gonna watch all his stuff and I'm gonna watch it in a row, blah, blah, blah. And then he actually did, mm-hmm. like while he was in Manila, he, he watched, thank God Gamitan did not have subtitles, when he watched <laughs> Keka mm-hmm. and, he, um, and he asked for dinner with me and Katya and uh, That's fun, and yeah. yeah so, um, you know, and he told Katya, I'm a big fan, and you need that in the Philippines, a big fan, because it's so hot. But it's... <laughs> so mm. he, he was like that. He was like, and parang, and then I realized na, ano, parang, he's very guarded, but I think if you have this, like, genuine love for cinema, mm-hmm. like, he'll really, you know... Yeah, well, in my case, I'm afraid to meet my idols, because first, I'm going to make an ass of myself. And second, because disappointment is inevitable. Yes. They will never be what you imagine them to be. Yes. And now that I think about it, it's a good thing I didn't have my picture taken with Kevin Spacey because I saw him at a film festival and then, oh, no. you know, in light of what's happened. Right? <laughs> so, um, sis, you've met people that you admire. Yes. Did you continue to admire them after? Yeah, there's some who, I know, like, uh, my, okay, so, so my favorite director is David Lynch, who yes. I've met a few times. Um, and he is a uh, darling, uh, absolute uh, sweet guy. And then um, Juliana Hatfield was my favorite. Oh musician. yes, 
invited me backstage. They oh. always say this line, I came all the way from the Philippines to see you. That works. That always works. You always works. have to say, I came all the yes. way from the Philippines. In fact, when Pavement, uh, my favorite band, Pavement, reunited. Um, Pavement because they were in the soundtrack of Pulp Fiction. Uh, <laughs> no, no, they weren't. That's oh, they weren't. Overkill, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but yeah, no, they said, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? Why don't you come? You're on our guest list. Um, mm. Come, come and see our second show. So, parang, parang there, there's some are really, or one of maybe my biggest crush ever, si Liv Tyler. <laughs> I even pretended. No, I no, no. It occurs to me you're you're a backstage pass kind of person, while the rest <laughs> of us are like you know in the crowd in general admission, and you're getting the backstage pass. Anyway, so um, how many movies have you made? Mm, six or five and a half. And you've also directed a lot of TV shows. Ah, uh, yes, I created a show called Rockista for yes. TV Five. And then. you've um, you've directed commercials. Yes. And okay, so I write a lot of um, essays and fiction, and this year my collected short stories is coming out. Yes. And um, there were a couple I actually removed because I th- I fear that they are terrible pieces of crap. And mm. to be honest, it's like, how did these things ever get published? So they are not included in my collected stories. And here is where we admit to the worst pieces of crap we have ever produced. <laughs> what are the things that you wish you had not done? Um, no, so, you know, I know growing up, uh, you know, like like in NU and, and, yeah. and seeing your show, it, it was always, even before I made... The, Pieces of art. I always remembered what you said, Ganda. When you look at your old stuff, one of two things about either, yeah. oh my god, this is brilliant. Yes, this Why brilliant. can't I do this anymore? It's like, I used to be great and now I'm yeah. crap. Yeah. yeah, or parang, I can't believe I ever wrote this. Yeah, well, who, who, who greenlit this? Yeah. And I, I, I think, like, even when we were talking in the dressing room, you you know that I'm like my worst critic. So I was like, I can't watch Super IP again. I hate Gamitan, and you know, and I'm very. In fact, it, one of the funniest things I think, one of the most entertaining things to watch is my Gamitan commentary. If you listen to the director's ah. comment, it's like, why, why is she wearing that? What did they even say yesterday? This <laughs> <week>? <laughs> wow, so it's like, honest commentary. It's, yeah, it's like self punishment. Mm-hmm. So, so. so. This makes me want to look for a, a DVD of Gamitan. <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, the, the ones I've directed. I think it, in terms of film, man, the, the ones I really love. This story really keka and rock and roll. So, how do you deal with a scandal involving family members? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think it's that so... you could get away without being asked that question. Uh, it, uh, I don't think I've ever said this uh, in any sort of uh, medium in any mm. sort of interview. But it was actually, you know, who I know told me about it, the hide, oh, yeah, I guess <laughs> the the, can, the, the scandal, video, the yes. video. Uh, it was Claudine Barreto who called me. Oi, may ano daw may video ganon ganon ganon. Then mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, um, and then shortly after, ano, it blew uh, up. Yeah, it kind of blew up. Um, uh, I, I think I think he was being blackmailed actually. Um, that was that, no, and then. Um, and then someone else released the dancing videos, and then, and then I guess the blackmailer panicked and released the, mm-hmm. the rest. Um, but it was no, it was a very strange time. I remember even at that that I know I was in a plane. You know, the Basabu Pak lo- loves playing these like music versions of pop songs, mm-hmm. and I know they, it started playing Careless Whisper. And you can never listen to play. Careless, and everyone looks at you. Yeah, parang they're like <laughs> waiting for my reaction. And I'm like, it's like what you're going to get up and dance. <laughs> uh, I know. What are we gonna do? Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> On a plane. <laughs> I know. Um, and then I know we were in London at the time. And no, oh, you know, kami ng TFC, ng, ng, ng press. Anyway, mm-hmm. like we were we were on a family trip in London, and then when we got home, ayun na parang and all the press that were there in the, the airport. I remember that, so it was a very strange. Diba? I mean, it, it reached Senate, it reached yes. ano. Um, all right, I guess you know, uh, Filipinos as as uh, like we were talking about, you know, they forget. Yeah. And now it's all like, you know, water under the bridge. I, I yeah, mean, and, for good. and actually, so much worse has followed, so... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so, just, just, you know, just hang tough, and then something worse... First, people will forget, and then something worse, worse will come happen. along. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, it was pretty painful for a while. Um, 
and then you kind of just have to I I though I was very outspoken I remember mm-hmm. like like if you put a mic in front of me I at the time I really would have spoken up against the uh, the the no the other party and yeah. um but but yeah exactly so, uh, which brings us to the other um, hot button topic in the last few years there's been the me too moment in um, american cinema mm-hmm. and um, when that first blew up i thought aha now there will be a reckoning in the philippines and i'm still waiting for the reckoning to happen and do you think that philippine cinema will ever have its me too moment i don't i don't parang now we were the same when me too happened i'm like eto na eto na, oh, eto na. na. Oh, philippines oh. ano mm-hmm. diba? especially ang daming Twitter warriors. Yes. No more. No, parang, and strangely enough, it happens in local music scene. Na parang, oh, this vocalist ano, hit on me or whatever. But it didn't happen in showbiz where there is so much. Yes. You know, I mean, so much that we stop, hear about. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, like, uh, I mean, for both men and women, right? Mm-hmm. Um, are, are uh, I think abused more more in showbiz here than in a lot of other countries, probably including the US. Yes. Parang wala talagang controls dito, di ba? Yeah. So, di ba, there's so much ano talaga, there's so much victim blaming, there's so much ano, eh kasi, alam naman yan, ang mangyayari yan, or she wouldn't, she shouldn't wear that, gusto niyang sumikat, di ba? Exactly. Daming, ano, so, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it, it is my my hope talaga that, that you know, the, the lid gets blown off and and you could because but it's it, it's, it's not happening now no? yeah yeah and i don't know is it because um because but i mean a lot of another money is is financial i need this to help my family i think that's and, that's uh, one mm-hmm. factor it's like i don't want to lose my job i don't want to lose uh, mm-hmm. my livelihood yeah i mean parang there there really needs to be a, some sort of i don't know like like uh raising or diba parang ano parang uh, the the industry has to be turned on its head. Really. Well, the, maybe no. maybe the the younger people are, are going to start it because the older people are already too set in their ways. Mm. Yeah. Currently, you run a studio that produces movies. Yes. So, um, f- uh, from what from your work, what is your um, diagnosis or your prognosis of the current film industry? As in, what's good about it? What's bad about it? Um. I know, like, like there, there was a magical year, uh, and I think it was like twenty. No, a ma- magical few years. Like, I know you're always, cause we're always waiting for the audience to, I know, diba, accept new kinds of cinema, more quality. Um, con- I mean, quality in terms of like just just more diversity in terms yeah. of, ano, just not rom coms all the time. Yes. I mean, in the Philippines right now, there's only two genres. Diba? It's horror or rom com. Rom coms. Yes. And then. And then sometimes they're combined. The horror rom com. Yeah. yeah. And then MMFF, okay, okay, my budget, my budget na pang fantasy. Yes, yes, yes. But, ano, um, and there was a, a great few years, and I think, you know, this is around the time of that thing called the Dana, which mm-hmm. was a romance, actually, mm-hmm. but a very different kind of romance. And then, yeah. um, Kenera Luna, and then, um, uh, Sunday Beauty Queen, and Die Beautiful, and, you know, like, wow, oh my gosh, it looks like the audience. Yeah, things are looking up, yeah. And the mm-hmm. audience is starting to look at, Things that are not the usual. Yeah, yeah. and then parang it went away, <laughs> which is so sad. You know what happened? Yeah. Um, the the so, Padhana was a different rom com, but then other people wrote that formula. Mm-mm. So the new thing became the formula. Mm-mm. So it was no longer the new thing. Yeah. It got tired, na rin. Who got cinema, di ba? Exactly. Parang, ano, mm-hmm. Yeah. With titles, ga na parang ano. The, the, talking about how this generation, ano, is giving up on love and imagine. Exactly. Yeah. Di ba? So mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's true. So so parang yeah. But but like Sunday Beauty Queen. I I mean I was like because there's so many good documentarists na Pinoy. Yes. Diba? And it's such a overlooked aspect of of um, of pop culture. So I thought, wow, okay, you know. Everyone's... So suppose they make documentaries. Where can they show them? I guess not in the mm-hmm. movie cinemas, uh, not mm-hmm. in the movie theaters. I I, I guess or my micro cinemas or ano, or baka, I mean Netflix has kind of like revitalized. <coughs> ano, mm-hmm. diba? Yun nga, the Great Hack, Wild Wild Country, right. all of that stuff. Um, parang the, there's there's a new kind of documentary like Citizen Four, na, na more 
cinematic, yeah. di ba? Um, so, yun. Uh, I mean, um, hopefully the, the streaming services are gonna get hip to that, especially in, in the region. And so, you have made six feature films, and um, no word on when the seventh is coming, but what will it take to make you do your sevenths? I don't okay. No, I, I went on self-imposed exile because I didn't want to be that studio head who was like, now I can greenlight all my movies. Right, right. <laughs> so I wanted to prove myself as a producer first. And, uh -huh. you know, I, I mean, I'm really happy with a lot of the stuff that we've been making at, you know, uh, very uh, yeah, masterful. So, so if you were um, out to, uh, so, you know, establish yourself as a producer, do you feel that... You know, you've done yeah. it, and then you can go back to so maybe I can. making movies. It's been three years since I joined, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the the studio, and then um, yeah, maybe maybe. So I think this year. I, I think, mean, do you have like a, a a drawer full of scripts that you've uh, written and haven't filmed? I ideas. There there is a script. There is a script, but th that it's a little pricey. It's like a Sam Raimi kind of like mm, okay. you know horror action gore, you know, and I don't know if it's. It'll necessarily make money because you uh, know down well good and downside of, of being more in the production uh, side. Yeah, producer seat is that you're always thinking uh, you know how, how am I gonna we... make the money back? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and you um, have been infected with practicality. Yeah. <laughs> and so I I another film I've been wanting to do is just like a small Q cinema or cinema laya type film, which is about you know, the misogyny and mm -hmm. you know um and I, in the body, this, this character based also on, <laughs> ano, uh, on, on stories of how, how people are taking advantage of their, their uh, place now in politics and, and kind of like using it to, um, to threaten women. And, mm -hmm. ano, so that, that, one, that one is definitely not going to make money. So I want to do it on a smaller budget and, and kind of um, uh, make it a little more personal. Um, and then there was that, that documentary on, on uh, the music 90s in the nineties. Yeah, but it's it's really hard making a documentary. Mm, yeah. So so there, there those are the kind of things that that uh, are kind of in the back pocket. But so anyway, now that the world is bonkers, how do you stay sane? How do I stay sane? Um, <laughs> that is a good question. I've been watching a lot of TV, an unhealthy <laughs> amount of television. Binging. And I, yeah. And then there's like so what's much. Good? Uh, succession is oh, amazing. Succession is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, no, that's my favorite uh, show. If you're um, and then Fleabag, uh, of, of course. course yes. uh, I, mean, uh, I think anyone who's, who loves that '90s style of fourth wall breaking. You know? mm -hmm. Um, what, I really love the OA, which was like a guilty pleasure, and then it became like, wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, parang I made a list. It's like I've been, I've seen fourteen series this year. <laughs> parang, oh my god, this is not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, this healthy? <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> but you know, you're still functioning. You're going to work, so yeah, I diba? guess it's okay. It's uh, part of the job, I guess. Enough sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, and I are playing dumb games with, with my wife, like overcooked, where it's like you run a restaurant. And, <laughs> yes, I know, I know. games are very important. Yes. Yes. So, um, and, and just, you know, DJing also. So mm. I've been DJing a bunch um, just to kind of just, you know, just uh, revel in, in music again. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So thanks very much. Thank you. Woohoo, at last. <laughs>